I believe very strongly in the concept that Nigeria is an entrepreneur nation. Everybody in Nigeria is an entrepreneur. We just haven't been able to unlock our potentials yet. But one of the main mantras of the Annabelle Leadership Academy and the Annabelle Group is the quotation from Michael Jordan. And I read, Michael Jordan says, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. And on 26 occasions, I have been entrusted to take the winning shot. And I missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is precisely why I succeed. Those are the words of Michael Jordan. We tend to be afraid of failure in Nigeria. And this is the message for you, that you cannot succeed without failing. It is an integral part of success. And all the speakers this morning and all the speakers we had over the last two days have consistently given you the same message. Now, I want to talk about Nigeria first. I'm going to go very quickly through this presentation because why am I so passionate about Nigeria? A lot of folks tend to have given up on Nigeria, especially our young people. But I want to redirect your views to Nigeria again. Out of 170 million people, we have 250 ethnic groups. We have a GDP of $250 billion. Anybody who looked at Nigeria's GDP about 10 or 15 years ago would agree with me that we have made progress. Do not believe anybody who tells you that in this democracy nothing has happened, nothing has changed, nobody's doing anything. Those people are telling you lies. We have $250 billion in a GDP today and we are growing consistently at 6% a year. So we have made progress. We now have a middle class in Nigeria for which you can build products, manufacture products that can be supplied to this growing middle class. There are a couple of industries that are expanding and opening up opportunities. Dr. ABC Jacko talked about the power, I mean the energy industry, but this power industry, we had a, power, a panel on power on Monday. You must look at the power industry again. It is about to unfold the kind of opportunities that we experienced in the telecommunications industry about 10 years ago. And we have taken a position, like I said, we're looking at producing smart meters. But in addition to that, when the, these, discos, these distribution companies that have taken over in Lagos, Eko, Ikeja, Ibadan, what have you, they are going to need people who are going to go from door to door to access the, and, and, and profile the customers of every electricity company. Because you have, even if anybody who lives in Lagos go to Lekki, you find that the entire stretch of Admiralty Way in Lekki has been turned into a commercial zone. Is that not true? You have a lot of shops there. But in the records of the Eco Distribution Company, those buildings are residential buildings. So the tariff they're paying is residential tariff. They're not paying commercial tariff. There are three tariffs that the new re electricity regime is going to bring. There's going to be industrial tariff, residential tariff, and commercial tariff. So those electricity companies are going to need foot soldiers who are going to hit the road, go from door to door, and profile each customer. That is opportunities for you. There are opportunities, of course, in the agricultural industry. A lot of has been said about that, so I don't want to butterize that point. But remember that um, uh, Dr. El Jaco talked about the Minister of Agriculture getting an award, the award that came from the Forbes magazine. One of the reasons that he got that award is that he was able to use technology to, uh, to stop a, the, the, the colossal corruption going on in the agricultural fertilizer industry. So now you have mobile phones uh, that uh, farmers are using, over 3 million farmers, in getting their fertilizer vouchers. So that, again, has created tremendous opportunity. Real estate, we know that there's a 20 million housing deficit in Nigeria. One of the areas that we haven't looked at strategically is producing low-cost housing for you, uh, for some of you in the hall here, and for some of us that are, are straight out of school. So there are huge opportunities in that area. And then, of course, you know the, the, the sophisticated revolution that happened in telecoms. I remember when I was working in Merrill Lynch, and it was very difficult 
uh, um, out of the Boston office. Very, very difficult to sell Nigeria as a success story. Most of the telecom companies in the United States and Europe refused to bid in the GSM licensing round that President Obasanjo was initiating at that time. But what happened? They went to their MBAs, Harvard-trained MBAs, and they told them Nigeria was a basket case. Don't invest in Nigeria. So that is why you ended up with Econet and MTN, the African telecoms companies. And we all know what happened. Uh, MTN uh, grew from becoming a small South African company to a global colossus based on the back of Nigerian consumers. So Nigeria has given the world a success story and it has made the, the investors of the world in certain industries to stand up and begin to look at us in a different light. If foreigners are coming to Nigeria consistently, then how is it that Nigerians are running away? It's a shame.